Hi everybody, this is April Perry and Jonathan Baylor back with another episode of The Sane Show. And Jonathan, today you are going to be answering a question that millions and millions of people are asking themselves every day, which is, why am I not seeing results? Now there's a couple of things I really want to talk about today because I'm getting emails from everyone asking me and I keep saying, I've got to ask Jonathan because I don't know all the reasons. I know some of them, but I really want to hear it from you. And number one is people are going through the traditional route of trying to lose weight, right? So they're eating less, they're exercising more, taking classes, counting calories, doing everything they can, not seeing results. So I think this is a really good chance to just reiterate, clarify, why is it that this is not happening for them? But then number two, there are people who are going sane or starting to go sane, and maybe they're not seeing the results that they expect or hope for. And so we want answers. You ready to provide those today? Absolutely. So let's let's do each in order. So the first one was was why aren't I seeing results when I when I eat less and when I exercise more? Is that correct? Yes. And then the second one is when I eat more and exercise less, but smarter, I'm still not seeing results. So what else so can I what? do? <laughs> All right. So, so for the first one, the, the why does eating less and exercising more not work or what, what might even be more common is why does it seem to stop working or why doesn't it work anymore? Like maybe I, I have starved myself in the past and it worked. But it yeah. seems to get harder and harder and works less and less well over time is what a lot of people experience. Does that sound about accurate? Yes. Well, I actually had a friend who said, I get up at five o'clock every morning and I go to a boot camp in my neighborhood where I am working out, I'm sweating, I'm exercising hard for a full hour. Then I count my calories all day long. I'm eating t sub 1200 calories every day. Nothing's happening. I'm not losing any weight at all. I still have maybe 15, 20 pounds, maybe more to lose, I'm not losing it. And, and the reason why I think we just need to talk about this really specifically is because there are people, men and women everywhere who are listening to this right now, who are hungry, who are tired of being hungry, who are just so frustrated thinking that they failed, thinking they just need to get up maybe earlier or maybe eat less. And they're grumpy and stressed out and frustrated. And I know because I used to be that way. So I want to make this really, really clear for those people in that situation. And they're totally justified to be grumpy and stressed out and frustrated. I always like to tell people that if I had to be hungry and tired in order to be healthy, which in and of itself is an oxymoron, you know, <laughs> I, I wouldn't be healthy either. So we don't need that. But the, the key thing to keep in mind here with the eat less and exercise more paradigm is that what most people experience is they don't just do that once. And I, I always tell this story because I think it's great. So I was talking with Jay Jacobs. He's one of the finalists from season 11 of The Biggest Loser. And he said, Jonathan, I've lost 100 pounds seven times in my life. Mm -hmm. So weight loss isn't the issue. We've all temporarily lost weight. We've all done that. We've all starved ourselves at least once and it's worked at least once. Mm -hmm. But here's the challenge. When we say work, we really have to be clear on what we mean by that. If what we mean by that is we can successfully temporarily lose weight, then yes, starvation will accomplish that. But here's the challenge. And this is what the science shows really, really clearly dig into this a lot in the book, The Calorie Myth, which is if you starve yourself and then you stop starving yourself, of course, you gain all the weight back and then some. But the, the most important thing to keep in mind is when you starve yourself and then stop starving yourself, you actually make metabolic changes happen in your body that makes future episodes of starvation less effective and then future weight gain after you starve yourself more rapid. In fact, there's a study we go into in the book where they can't do these studies on people because it's inhumane to do this to people in a laboratory setting, although it's perfectly fine to do it on national television, <laughs> but, you can't, but you can't do it in a laboratory setting. So they'll take rodents and they'll yo-yo diet them. So they take a rodent, they'll make it eat less and exercise more. And then the rodent will temporarily lose weight because starvation does cause temporary weight loss. And then they will just give the rodent access to a regular amount of food. And every single time the rodent yo-yos, they lose weight slower than they did the previous time and they gain the weight back faster. So let's be very clear, works means, at least in a sane context, that I am healthy and happy and able to thrive for the rest of my life. So by that definition, eating less and exercising more fails you. You don't fail it, it fails you for two reasons. One, you can't do it long-term because no one can go through their life hungry and tired and rock their life. And two, 
it fails you because every single time you do it, it will make the next time you do it even harder. Whereas when you go sane, for example, the longer you eat vegetables, the easier it becomes to eat vegetables. So those are the two primary reasons eat less and exercise more is failing you. You're not failing it. Well, and I really appreciate you saying this. And I think it's important for all of us to remember what you've just taught us. And I think it sounds so logical. You think, well, of course, if I'm going to yo-yo diet, if I keep hurting my metabolism over and over and over again, pretty soon it's not going to give me those quick results that I got maybe when I was 15, 16 years old or something like that. But what I think is so challenging is that every voice out there, pretty much, except yours and you know, some others who have gotten on the right track, keep telling people how to eat less and exercise more. I mean, I was just listening to a podcast and I heard this kind of popular fitness instructor say, okay, you want to see the scale move by next week. What you need to do is you need to jog for 90 minutes on Saturday and 90 minutes on Sunday. Only eat, you know, carry your vegetables with you. Don't eat out. Don't eat too much. Really limit your calories. Then you'll see the scale move on Monday, like giving hope to people. And I listened to that and I thought, you know what? Prior to meeting Jonathan and becoming familiar with Sane, I probably would have done it. I probably would have set my, on my calendar, thought, okay, I'm gonna run for 90 minutes today. Then I'm gonna run for 90 minutes tomorrow. I'm not gonna eat, I'm gonna make that scale move. I would have done whatever I could because I would feel like I could do this, I could take this on. But then what would have happened is I would have been totally grumpy with my family the whole weekend. I would have deprioritized my husband, deprioritized my children, worn myself out. And the only measure of my success as a person that weekend would have been what the scale read on Monday. Do you hear that a lot? I hear that a lot, April. And in fact, in telling that story, you, you are bridging the gap here in terms of like, okay, eat less, exercise more. Why is or isn't that working? And then eat more, exercise less, or the sane approach where we focus on the quality of food, like quote unquote, why isn't that working? And it lies in that story you just said, which is making the scale move by Monday. Like that's mm -hmm. a really important distinction because yeah. let's, let's be very, very clear here, right? If I was getting paid millions of dollars to take people who are morbidly obese and make the scale move as quickly as I can on national television with no regard for their health or long-term well-being, I wouldn't necessarily put them on a sane lifestyle. Okay. So that, and that's, that's really important, right? So if, yeah, you, yeah. if you want to make the scale move really quickly, right? This is just how life works too. Sometimes we treat exercise and eating different from every other, every other model of, of in the world. So if you want to make a thousand dollars really fast, like <laughs> you, there's a lot of things you could do to make a thousand dollars really fast. I don't know if I'd recommend them, but like if you really need money by Monday, we can figure out a way to do that. It's probably going to hurt you long term, but we can get you a bunch of money by Monday if you want to. That's kind of what eating less and exercising more does. It's that it's that quick fix approach. It's that get something immediate right now. But now contrast that to the like get money by Monday to uh, you know become get 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 an education and get training that will allow you to generate an income sustainably and healthfully for the rest of your life mm -hmm. nothing's going to happen by like if you say well but my bank account didn't change by monday clearly this is ineffective <laughs> <laughs> then you're going to take a much different approach right so the, but the challenge is and and this is why it breaks my heart to hear some of these popular voices encouraging the quick fix the short-term approach but in some ways, yeah, you know, I, 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 it's going to break my heart to defend them, but I'm going to I'm going to defend them for a second. And it's like if if people keep saying I want the scale to move by Monday, yeah, then it's really hard. And this is now I'm going to sort of segue into, well, why isn't sane eating working? Well, if you define working by the scale is moving by Monday then sane isn't the right approach for you because mm -hmm. sane is in fact, in fact, especially for a lot of the most successful sane success stories who are females, these are individuals who have never strength trained in their entire life. And because they've never strength trained, once they do eccentric exercise, once they start developing calorie hungry, lean muscle tissue, here's what happens. They burn 10 pounds of fat 
but then they develop 10 pounds of lean, toned, awesome, sexy muscle tissue. So in fact, mm -hmm. the scale didn't move at all, never mind the fact that their body fat percentage dropped like 10 or 15% and they look totally different. In that scenario, which is incredible, like your life will, if you drop 10 pounds of fat and put on 10 pounds of calorie hungry, lean muscle, you will look radically different, you will feel radically different, but the scale will not change at all. So we have to define what works means. Like we have to be really crystal clear on what works means. Does that make sense? Yes, no, that makes a lot of sense. And I want to be able to jump into, okay, so what if I do go sane? Now, before we get there though, there's a little mind shift that has to happen. And I know this because I've been hearing from a lot of people who are worried about making that shift. The people who seem to have the hardest time starting to go sane are the ones who are seeing at least some results or maintaining some results by limiting their calories and exercising more. So there are some people who are able to really be disciplined. They count their calories every single day. They work out every single day to be able to maintain a certain weight. For a lot of these people, the conversations that I've had with them are very emotional because I hear things like, I never enjoy eating. I've been stressed about my weight my whole life. Every day I worry how many calories I eat. Every day I'm concerned that I'm not getting enough exercise and I'm really, really tired of it. But at the same time, I'm afraid to go sane because I'm afraid if I stop counting and stop controlling and stop doing all these things that everybody else tells me to do, I'm going to completely spin out of control and I'm going to be, end up worse than I am right now. What do you say to that? That really resonates with me and you actually jogged a metaphor. Some people say that they like my metaphor. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna actually bring up a metaphor that I forgot, but this is a metaphor from like five years ago. And so thank you for bringing this up. <laughs> so. Let's imagine you, you, you use in the story, you, you know, I, I, I can do this. I'm, I'm, I'm very diligent about it. I'm eating less. I'm exercising more. And it's quote unquote working for me. Here's my analogy. Imagine you have a beach ball and your goal is to keep the beach ball in the air. Okay. So keeping your weight down is analogous to keeping the beach ball up. Okay. okay. So there's at least two ways you can keep the beach ball up. One is to Smack it up. And if you're watching the video, you can see me smacking it up. I'm smacking the beach ball up. Beach ball falls down. And as long as you focus on nothing else, right? Your kids are talking. You're like, quiet, kids. I'm trying to keep this beach ball in the air. So you, you knock the beach ball up. Your boss is like, hey, I need you to get this work done. And if you get it done, I'll give you a promotion. You're like, ah, stop. I've got to keep this beach ball in the air. Leave me alone. But it's like, hey, the beach ball is in the air most of the time. It's quote unquote working. Yeah. And if I stop doing that, the beach ball is going to fall on the ground. And you're right, it will fall on the ground. But now let's 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 pause for a second here. Imagine you could build a shelf. And instead of smacking that beach ball up in the air and spending your whole life putting that beach ball up in the air and essentially making you serve as what a shelf could do automatically without <laughs> you doing anything, you actually gave yourself permission to temporarily not worry if the ball was on the ground. I love sure. that. So the ball's on the ground. And you spend now, and here's the here's the catch. Here's the catch. Be transparent. Okay. Here's the catch. You give yourself permission three. You give yourself permission to spend three to six months building the shelf. Okay. And the what's going to happen building, to the ball during that time? I think that's the question. Well, what's going to happen to that ball is, well, that maybe this is where the analogy falls down. So the ball is just chilling there. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> the ball's not. The ball's not rolling around and destroying anything. Because okay. the act of building the shelf, what 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 that's doing is actually you rebuilding your metabolism. It's you rebuilding your biology. It's you healing your body. So what what where the analogy breaks down is is there's either a shelf or there isn't a shelf. But what will actually happen in this scenario is there will gradu a shelf will gradually appear, and the ball will only be sitting on the ground for a short period of time, and it will slowly rise up off the ground on the shelf. But if your goal is like the ball is not on the ground, bottom line, period, AKA the weight on the scale is changing. And that's my thing. Like you have to spend three to six months giving yourself permission to pause on that saying, I'm going to rebuild, I'm going to reset and I'm going to, I'm going to invest for the long term, And then I'm going to set the ball on the shelf after three to six months of work. And then I'm going to be able to live my life, but yes. you've got to give it that three to six months of work. 
Okay, I'm really, I love this metaphor. I like your metaphors a lot. I think that that's really, really helpful because that's exactly what I feel like I've experienced in my life. Now, what I will say is that sometimes that shelf that you're going to build with Sane isn't going to be maybe as high as you wanted it, right? Or on the scale as low as you wanted it. I and mean, this is where I think let's go into what happens when you are sane because what I found is that if I starve myself consistently all the time and exercise like crazy, I could get, you know, maybe seven to eight pounds lighter than I am right now. But by being sane, not ever being stressed about calories or exercise or anything, I'm happy and healthy, but I'm not like, I'm not seeing those results of just being super skinny like I did when I was really, really starving exercising. Does that make sense? Yeah, no, it makes total sense. But, but what I'm what I'm hearing you say is is not necessarily that sane isn't. I, well, I definitely am not hearing you say sane isn't giving you the results you want. What I hear you saying is that with ten percent of the effort, I can get eighty percent of the results yeah. <laughs> and none of the negative side effects that I got with eating less and exercising more. And that's with 10% of the effort. So if you really said, you know what, I want to be at the body composition, I wanna be at a better co body composition, you could you could be sane harder. Like you could- you That's could what put, I wanna talk about. <laughs> yeah, so you, you could put, if you put the same level of effort and time commitment into sanity as, as someone does eating less and exercising more, not only will you get as good of results, you'll get better results and they'll help your health, whereas yeah. the health will be compromised in the other model. Okay, I love this. All right, and of course, I think that's exactly what I'm saying is that my life right now has been more, I mean, had more stress in it, a lot of good stress, some not so good stress, but a lot of stress in it than I've really ever had before in my life. If I were not sane right now, now is the period of life when I probably would have gained 15 pounds or more because I just, I, I don't have the bandwidth to be able to devote as much time to counting calories and being at the gym every day, that kind of thing. But I feel like saying this totally saved me because I can maintain a level of health that works for me even when things are stressful and busy. Does that make sense? Absolutely. And that, that's the key thing is, is it's not, so if you go from spending, not you personally, if an individual listening to this show <laughs> goes from spending 10 hours a week on eating less and exercising more to spending one hour a week on a sane lifestyle and sees slightly worse results. Well, then they're choosing between having nine hours of their life back and slightly worse results or nine hours of their life taken away and slightly better results. And okay. what they could do then is they could say, maybe I spend two hours per week on my sanity. Mm -hmm. And then maybe in two hours, I get what I got in 10 hours of insanity. And I think that's really the key thing is it's, again, no one's saying that eat less and exercise more can't work. It can absolutely work. Any any person who is trying to get to 3% body fat to be a fitness competitor has to count calories, bottom line, because to get to 3% body fat, you've got to do crazy things. So it's not that it doesn't work in quotations, it's that our definition of work is something very different than the definition of work on NBC's Biggest Loser. Okay, got it. So now let's talk about people who are sane because from the conversation we just had, I know that there are people saying, are you serious? There's a way I cannot be so exhausted trying to keep this beach ball up in the air, trying to always count my calories, trying to always be in control and, and making my body smaller. I can actually heal my metabolism. I can eat food that will nourish me. I can maintain a level of health effortlessly. That sounds too good to be true, but I think people trust us and see results at this time, so they're excited. So then they start going sane. Now, first of all, we talked about the three to six months, which is awesome. Let's talk about if it does take longer than three to six months, because there are some cases, well, especially let's say someone really has maybe 150 pounds to lose. Maybe they have really yo-yo dieted their whole life, or maybe they you know, have had a lot of children. I know there's a lot of different factors that you talk about in your book and on your website. What would take someone longer than three to six months to really start seeing results? Three to six months is a really good barometer for how much time it takes to heal your body. So it's three to six months to get to the point where your body is healed and then can actually restore it, its own ability to burn fat. Let me unpack that. It's actually really important. So I'm going to use another analogy. Okay. 
say you break your ankle. So if you break your ankle, it's not going to seem like it's any better on day two. It's not going to seem like it's any better on day three. But if you, if you are patient and you let your body heal itself after a matter of months, your ankle will be healed and you're able to walk around it for forever unless you break it again. You don't want to break it again. Your metabolism, your hormones, your digestive system, your neurobiology, same way. It's going to take three to six months for you to heal that. And you might not see external results during the healing process. That's where the trust comes into play. Just like you might not see external results when you're when you're in school or when you're practicing the piano or when you're farming your field. But in the, in the real world, sometimes you got to put in results before you or put an effort before you see the results, which is all good. We understand that. It's all good. So we go three to six months. Then our, our body's ability to burn fat and to balance calories for us is restored. We drop the inflammation in our brain. We rebalance our hormones. We heal our gut. At that point, what a lot of people experience, and a lot of people experience this, let's be honest, way before three to six months, three to six months is quite conservative, is they experience, I'm going to get a little technical here, but they experience what's called a spontaneous reduction of caloric intake. So what that actually means is their body starts to fuel itself with the hundreds of thousands of calories of energy that's already in the body. So if you're 100 pounds overweight, and if there's 3,500 calories in a pound of fat, then you have what, 350,000 calories already in your body, which begs an interesting question. Like why would a human being who has 350,000 calories already in their body ever be hungry? It's because there's, there's, there's a state, a disease state in your brain and in your hormones that isn't allowing your body to understand that information. Now, once that's healed, your body understands that it starts to say, Hey, I definitely need to eat food because I need nutrients. I need vitamins. I need min minerals. I need amino acids. I need phytochemicals. But man, I've got a lot of energy already in this body. So people will start to just be full and they'll start to naturally make healthier food choices. And their body will start to supplement the food that is going past their lips with the food that is already stored on their hips. Okay. And that's when the fat loss will really start. And, and in fact, we call this sometimes, I call it the, de the delayed waterfall effect where you'll see my brother's a perfect example. My brother's 10 years older than I am. And he went sane, like super extreme sane. He's like an all or nothing guy. <laughs> and this was many years ago. This was back in 2012. He went extremely sane for three months. And he was just like, Jonathan, I hate to tell you this, brother, but it ain't working. I don't know what your problem is. And he was at like 215 at that time. And then he gives me a call and he says, Jonathan, in one week, I've dropped like seven pounds. And then in another week, seven more pounds, seven more pounds. And he actually got down to like 190. And his girlfriend at the time said, Tim, what are you doing? Like, you're getting too thin. You need to stop. So there, there came a point, and a lot of people see this, where once the body is healed, once the body gets back its ability to burn fat automatically, then you start to see rapid, healthy fat loss. When I say rapid, I'm talking one to two pounds per week. If you go anything above one, I'm excuse me, one to two, yeah, one to two pounds per week. Anything above that is is borderline unhealthy. Okay. Now I have heard that. I think this is reading on your website. I've kind of read through a bunch of the information within the premium program. Is there some information about how sometimes the fat around your internal organs will burn first? Am I remembering something wrong? Something yeah. like they said that sometimes you don't burn the fat like on your arms or on your legs first, that if there's fat around your liver or internal fat that you maybe can't see that that would burn first to make you healthier. Am I just imagining that? <laughs> well, you're, well, you're not imagining. So a lot of people really want targeted fat loss or they'll say, for example, like, why, why am I not losing fat here? Why am I losing fat here? The, the, the key thing to keep in mind is that unless you're doing very accurate body fat measurements, like you cannot use the scale to judge fat loss. Okay. What you can, you can't. The scale will tell you how much weight you've lost. And if you want to lose weight, you should never, ever, ever resistance train ever. And that's, that's a terrible idea. Like resistance training is unambiguously one of the most healthy and beneficial things you could ever do, but it's going to develop muscle tissue, which will make you weigh more. So like that in and of itself, you need to throw your scale away. I know I've said this before, but like, unless you have a child who you need to weigh for medical purposes, having a scale in your house is a little bit like having a butter churn in your house. Like it is an <laughs> absolute device that does not need to exist anymore. But what about those fat measuring scales, the ones that send those pulses through your body? What those about are, those? They were just, here's, the, here's the simplest thing to do. 
buy a pair of jeans that you want to fit into <laughs> that you can't fit into because that waist circumference is the measure. Like that waist okay. circumference is the one measure you need. That's glorious. Okay, I love that. All right, so now let's talk a little bit about how you would go sane harder, okay? Because there are people, I mean, this, these are the emails I'm getting. I'm getting messages and emails, and they're from people who are essentially saying things like, okay, April, I just, I need some advice. I need some help. And I'm like, I'll come to Jonathan. So they're saying things like, I've been eating sanely for several months. I'm never hungry. I'm eating well, but I don't know if I'm eating too many whole food fats. I still have maybe 10 to 15 pounds to lose. Now, this is where we did do that podcast about losing those last 10 pounds. Is that the societal construct or do you really need to lose those pounds? But for people who are kind of in, and probably where, where I am, I'm guessing, where they would maybe like to be in better shape and like to see some more results, but they're kind of at a, a point where their body feels good where it is. How do you help people go sane harder? <laughs> what would you say? In the in the qual in the quantity world, right? The answer is you would eat less food and you would do more exercise. In the quality world, it's it's similar, but the exact opposite. If that okay. makes any sense. So you're going to increase the quality of your eating. You're going to increase the quality of your exercise. So first and foremost, a lot of people that think they're eating sanely are eating saner. So they're eating saner yeah, okay. than they used to eat, but they may not actually be eating sanely. Okay. A sane way of eating means that you're eating double digit servings of vegetables every single day consistently. It also means you're eating between four and six servings of nutrient dense protein. And nutrient dense protein is nutrient, like eggs aren't nutrient dense protein, they're whole food okay. fats. Beans aren't nutrient dense proteins, they're legumes. Nuts aren't nutrient dense proteins, they're whole food fats. And you're eating three to six servings of whole food fats per day. Like, and, and you're eating minimal insanity, okay. that's it. Like, so if you're doing that, and in fact, we have a, a seminar that we put on saneseminar.com where we put you through, we, we provide a little sane results planner. We just break it down. If you eat these many vegetables, these many proteins, these many fats, and this much insanity, here's the results you can expect. And there's also, there's a bunch of other factors we look at. We say, were your parents overweight? Are you over 40? Are you under 40? Have you had children? Have you yodided in the past? Blah, 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 blah. But the bottom line is we really need to delineate. My mother does a great job of this. She's like, Jonathan, I don't know if I'd call myself sane, but you know, I'm really happier with my saner way of eating. And I said, mom, <laughs> that's brilliant. You know, and she, and, and, but you know, she's eating saner than she used to eat. And that's cool. And you know, we always talk about progress, not perfection. This is about what you want, but there is absolutely. And even if you're at 12 servings of non-starchy vegetables, four servings of nutrient dense protein, four servings of whole food fats, and that totally fills you up. Look, we can take it to the next level because if your vegetables are, for example, coming from like carrots and, mm -hmm. and celery, you know, we could throw some kale in there. We could throw some Swiss chard in there. We could throw some optimal vegetables. If your protein is all coming from from uh, a conventionally bought beef and like conventional chicken, mm -hmm. maybe we throw some salmon in there instead. Maybe we throw in some grass fed beef. Maybe we throw in some mollusks, clams, <laughs> clams oysters. <laughs> like there's, we drive up the nutrient density even further. We speed up the healing. Your whole food fats, is your whole food fat coming predominantly from, uh, well, oil isn't fat, a whole food fat, it's a non whole food fat. But like, for example, macadamia nuts are way saner than pecans and okay. avocados are way saner than uh, uh, almonds. So, so there's, okay. There's, okay. there's many different levels of sanity, both in terms of the types of, of food groups you're eating and then even the level of sanity of the foods within those food groups. Okay, so another question on whole food fats. Do you think that some, let's say somebody is eating all the, they're eating, you know, 10 plus, servings of non-starchy vegetables, they're eating four to six servings of nutrient dense proteins. But what if they're eating like eight to 10 servings of whole food fats? Would that make a difference too? Oh, absolutely. Yes. And if they're, if let's, I mean, the inter, the angry people on the internet who, who, who don't like sanity, there, there's a few of them and they're like, oh, well, uh, sane way of eating is just a, a sneaky way of getting people to eat fewer calories. And what happened? Yeah, people actually. I mean, if you're eating, if you're trying to get full on McDonald's, you're going to have to eat a bunch of calories to get full, and that's the essence saying that's satiety. So when you yeah. start eating higher satiety foods, you will accidentally eat an appropriate number of calories. Now, let's be very, very clear. 
you can overeat whole food fats. You can absolutely overeat whole food fats. In fact, we say explicitly everywhere in the book, on the website, every time I talk about it, like you should never just sit down with a bag of macadamia nuts ever. Okay. <laughs> ever, right? Whole food fats should always be eaten in the context of a complete sane meal, mm -hmm. which includes vegetables first, first, protein second, whole food fats third. And that's a, and that's another big thing, April. A lot of people, a lot of people, especially men, will say, I've gone sane. And what they've actually done is gone on a, a, a high fat, high protein, low everything else diet, <laughs> like not eating vegetables, not eating anything else. And that's actually not a, that's saner, but sane is about vegetables first. Remember that. Okay. So if we're looking at these proportions that you outlined as far as serving sizes, if you want to overeat the vegetables, you could eat as many of those as you want. You could eat 20 plus servings of non-starchy vegetables a day if you wanted, right? That's exactly right. Yes. Your now, stomach would explode before you <laughs> Okay. So that's good to know. Now, what about the protein? Can you overeat on protein? It'd be very difficult to overeat nutrient-dense protein if you're eating natural nutrient-dense protein. So if you're eating whey protein powder, you could very easily overeat whey protein powder. But when it comes to fish or meat, you would be hard pressed to overeat high quality fish or meat, high yeah. quality. Now, if you buy junk ground chuck, which is like, it's actually gets more of its calories from fat than from protein, you could overeat that very easily. Okay, all right. Now, I think this is just really helpful to answer these questions because I know that people are trying to navigate it. They're trying to figure out like, okay, what do I do? How do I make this better? Because when the answer used to be just, cut my calories more or go run an extra hour, that was kind of easy, right? It just seemed like it was an easy solution. When it's something like increase the quality of my food or let's look at my servings, this is a little bit trickier, I think. So I think it's really helpful. Is it, I think there's, it's also just a, a mental shift. Sometimes, sometimes it seems like it's harder, but in reality, like even like we have an app that will help you do this. It's the same, yeah. same just search for same solution on iTunes or on, on Google Play. You can use sticky notes if you want. Like honestly, for a week, write down the number of servings of non-starchy vegetables, nutrient-dense protein and whole food fats, and then other yeah. that you eat in a day. And I think you will be shocked by what you see. And I think, yeah. you know, in the past you would have said, let's just go run for an additional hour. What you're gonna say instead is, let's just take three of those servings of insanity and replace them with three servings of vegetables and that's going to do so much for your results. And I think like writing it down or putting it in an app is really important because what we think we're doing sometimes <laughs> and what we're it's actually doing might not be the same thing. Okay. I have loved this podcast. Any kind of final words or any final words of encouragement you want to give to those who are tired of not seeing results? Yeah, no. The number one thing is how how are you measuring results? Because if the results you're measuring are by the scale, then you know not seeing results is actually that's actually that's not the measurement we use in the same world. So you you can't you know if you're taking a class in Spanish and you're like my French isn't getting any better, that's not the right that's not the right measure. So you're never <laughs> going to be happy. However, if you are judging by your energy level, if you're judging by your sex drive, if you're judging by your mental clarity, if you're judging by a waist circumference. Those are valuable measures for sanity. And then the next action I would recommend for people is if you're not already tracking your servings of non-starchy vegetables, nutrient-dense protein, whole food fats, and then just other, just throw everything else in a category of other. It's going to keep it simple. Do that for a week and see if you could move from some of that insanity to some more sanity. And I think you're going to really enjoy the results. Yeah, I love that suggestion. It's a very specific next action, getting the app, tracking it. And I think as a stretch goal for me, and I'm hoping that those who are listening will be excited to join us as well, is to take your sanity to the next level, wherever you are right now. I don't know if that's possible for you, Jonathan, because you're already pretty high up there. But I think this is a really good goal for us to say, well, how can I make it just a little bit better? How can I be a little bit healthier? How can I make my body stronger? And I think we're gonna be pretty excited about that. Absolutely, April. Well, I appreciate you giving us the opportunity. I think this is a really important topic and hopefully this this helped folks. And I just want I just want folks to keep in mind again that remember that if you're judging your results by the short term, like in anything in life, man, that's not like you got it. You got to play the long game. You got to look at it in terms of long term, <laughs> right? Because when you do it that way, I think it changes everything, doesn't it? 
Absolutely. All right, everybody. Well, I hope you enjoyed today's show. We're so glad you're with us. We'd love it if you would share it with your friends. Help other people who are tired of counting calories, tired of exhausting themselves, exercising to be able to go sane. So have a wonderful day and you remember to stay sane.